Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts every single day. I'm Rudo, joined by AJ Hayfley, coming at you live from the DNVR bar. Not... Look, there is some Avalanche news, obviously, based on the title of the show. We will get into that. We'll probably start there, but we're going to get into some other interesting uh, little details from around the league. Abs involved in some things that let's be real probably won't come to fruition or anything at all but still should be a fun little show uh let's start off that's how we should market it should be a fun little show yeah it's just a fun little show that's all uh abs have called up martin kaut and mikhail maltsev i think many people rejoiced a little bit at finding that out their roster situation Still in a ton of flux. Obviously, McKinnon. Oh, is it? Unlikely to be back for is Tuesday. Is it, Bruto? Landeskog, obviously out. <laughs> Devon Taves, also out. You now have uh, Mateau, Stefan Mateau on... LTIR. LTIR. Uh, Along with the, Pavel Francouz. Yes, who's been there. Uh, so, still messy. But they should have a, a full lineup for Tuesday, at least. <laughs> Yeah, um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, just to recap kind of where we were, uh, the Avs went with 19 skaters against the Blues on Saturday. Yep. Uh, because of salary cap restrictions, Yep. they had to go with the cheapest guys that they, they could. They, the three dudes they called up literally put them less than $5,000 under the cap, and yeah. had they wanted to call up either of Kaut or Maltsev, they couldn't. Yeah. They would have had to have sent uh, Ranta right. down as well. And they didn't want to do that. Um, so New Hook went down in part because of money, but also in part because he just didn't have a very good preseason. And, yep. You know, they want him. That is a guy who needs to find the confidence a little bit. Needs to I figure think so. out. Needs to figure out the game. This is, and we talked about this a little bit before, but this is like, Give him 10, maybe 15 games down there, and, and then let's go. It's not – you don't want to see him laboring down there in yeah, the I NHL mean, well, for Yeah, I mean, remember long. when he signed last year, it was like, okay, well, let's see how he does. And he tore it up. And he just – yeah, he dominated the AHL, and it was like, well, that's done. Yep. So, <clears throat> you know, that was – uh Yeah, that was last year, and now he's got to he's got to have to do that again. Yep. But to to see them go with LTIR uh, uh, today, and they now they have the freedom to call up or send down or do whatever. Yep. And they immediately drop Dylan Sakura back down. Yeah, back down. Uh, the only one of those guys that stayed is Magna because uh, they need a four C at this point, yep. and. Which, uh, Malt seven and Kout getting the and shot. Kout, we'll, yeah. we'll get a look here, and because they don't have extra forwards, that's uh, the, the twelve. Only, yeah. yeah, Jack Johnson did travel with them, so if Jack Johnson comes back into the lineup, then maybe Curtis McDermott could slide slide in at a forward spot. Sure, but for right now, uh, until Jack Johnson is cleared to actually play. I'm going to assume that McDermott is still on defense. Yep. And that they are rocking no spare forwards. So No spare nothing. Yeah. Really, no spare nothing. Uh, tough spot to be in. Definitely not. Third game yeah. of the goddamn season. And you, you've already played a game against St. Louis that, based on the roster, was an auto loss, essentially, despite, you know, the Avs made it close at the end of that yeah. game. But... You look yeah, at those two you, rosters and you're like, okay, whatever. We didn't really get to finish our post game show. Yeah, we more important things came uh, up. <laughs> you know, Michelle Goulet just like rolled in on us, <laughs> sat down and was like, Let's which was talk. was dope. Which, yeah, by the was, way, <laughs> it was awesome, but it was just like, well, this is happening. Um, we didn't, uh, but how could St. Louis really feel good about that? Right, the, like you're happy to win a game. It right? took it's Toronto to calling back a kicked in goal for them to not right. give to, up a point in to that blow hockey a game. four one lead uh, yeah. against, <laughs> against a preseason squad. Yep. 
Like, if that's... You and I were both down on St. Louis going into yeah, the year, but and I was not, up on their forward core. Not that far down. Now. But that was... Spooky. It, that was definitely a a situation where I, I I looked at it from St. Louis's perspective. I was like, look, a win is a win, and you don't apologize for the situation definitely. other teams you, are in. You take what you can get. The Avs won a game last year in Vegas where they Vegas had, had 17, 18, 17 guys. dudes. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is what it is. But as your opening night win... You don't feel good about that. Yeah. yeah, like you felt they had to feel a lot better about last year's opening night win against Colorado. Yep. Where they just beat a good Avs felt, team. Felt immediately horrible yeah. about it in game, game two. Game but. two changed, you know, flipped that script. But, <laughs> you know, at least after game one, they were like, oh, yeah, this is a good team. Yep. Definitely. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you feel there. that way after that one. That was not, it was not an impressive performance from the Blues like, at all. It really Especially didn't feel like, great. The, knowing that, like the second period, they got dominated. Yep. So it was. It, it'll be interesting. I am very curious to see how Arizona does tonight. Me too. It's going to be interesting because the Arizona Buffalo Tankathon the other day. That was a wild one. It was. Well, it was it a was fun a, hockey it was a game. Wild yeah. game. But how weird is it that that's the game that they scheduled on a Saturday afternoon? The one game on TV. At yeah, the time. there was yeah. one thing on TV, and it was like because every Saturday, hockey fan wakes up. It's Saturday. What are we gonna watch, watch today? Hockey Let's watch day. hockey. This is gonna hockey, hockey, hockey. Yeah. And you fire it up, and you look at the schedule. It's Buffalo, NHL.com, Arizona, the Sabers, and the Coyotes. And you're like, hmm. Maybe you're I'll like, watch hockey later. You're like, I could do this, or I could shove a pine cone in my eyeball. Like, which one would you prefer? I, the, and then the you, Arizona... That's an actual fair question. And then the Arizona-Buffalo <laughs> game just became totally And it was a blast. It turned out to be a great hockey yeah. game in a vacuum. Like, All these goals... Like, it was Dustin Tos- Tokarski against... And I watched it on mute, so I never learned how to pronounce ma- his name. Ma- 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 the guy who was from the Czech Republic and never played a game in North America. So... <laughs> Anyway, it ended up being a great hockey game, and that's what we were enjoying. <laughs> that's what it's all about. I man. can't At wait the for game of two of that yeah. season series. I'm saying, let when, the, is, when do they play? Again? Just Let's let them go. play every night, and whoever wins more gets the first overall pick. <laughs> what are we watching? Yeah, this is a game that actually looks dope. It's, I mean, it's other like than, super skee ball. Other than it involving Ellen, yeah, who might bully you. Ellen DeGeneres is not my favorite, but. He hasn't used it yet, though. Holding, holding what? He, he's, he's saving it for the court segment when we have to judge Buffalo Savers versus Jack Eichel. Uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Other big news today, you know, uh, other than the thing the just dropped as we were waiting to go live yeah. was a Vander Kane banned, uh, banned 20 tw- suspended one 21 game games. suspension for violating COVID protocols. God, that's like a Nazem Kadri roughing. Oh, that is exactly like like that. Yeah. I Is 21 games such an odd number? It is it very was, specifically was, was, the one. Was yeah. 19 not enough? <laughs> was 23 too far? I don't a bridge know. too far? I don't <sighs> AJ, does does Evander Kane ever play in the NHL again? Yes. You think so? Yes. Because you know why? Right now it's looking pretty sketchy. You know why? Why? Because he can score goals. True. But I I and this isn't me trying to minimize in any way what went down uh no, the totally, things that totally. he's been accused of. Because what he what he got suspended for was not related to that, maybe. Well, no, what he got suspended for was uh, faking a vaccination yeah, card. Yeah, sure. And then in the same statement, they also said that uh, the 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 investigation into the allegations made by his estranged wife yeah. could not be substantiated, and they were not going to make a further comment. But that doesn't mean it didn't play into the suspension length, necessarily. It, well, I, I mean, I'm not going to... I don't know, sure. right? I don't know. And that's where I'll just leave it at, is I don't know. Sure. Um, I just... Yikes! I'm, you know, I. It's it's bad it's a, all the way around. Too. He needs he needs help, man. Yep. Like that's a dude that he doesn't need to be back in the NHL. 
He doesn't need to be on vacation somewhere. He needs to be he needs to be getting help. He needs to be building up a support system around him that can that can check his bullshit and put him in line because I remember before he got dealt to San Jose because there was Colorado I mean, had sniffed around yeah. and so I started doing some background on it and I talked to a handful of people around the league that said, "Look, he's a lot. He's a really talented guy." But what he really needs is some discipline. He yep. needs, he needs, he needs to be in a group that will keep him in line. Uh, he needs to be in a group where he's not, he's not the big dog, you know, where he's not the star player, but he's part of a team one. and one that one that has an attitude that keeps him kind of in check. You know, he needed he needed an authority figure. And it sounds like things just because of how things went in San Jose, right? It started the, out that way. The and first it went couple really years well. in San Jose, everything seemed great, and then it just went. It just got worse, and it and just I, got worse. You know, I, and I, I, I do wonder. You see, guys like Jumbo leaves, Patty yeah, Marlowe yeah. left, and he came back. But right, a lot of the the core leadership of that team left, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, Evander Kane is. Uh, where back he is to now. His, uh, back to yeah. back to some of the bad habits of his of his youth, you know? It was just it it was it started out really well and then it just it just took such a turn and then nobody stepped up to help him and you know, it and and then he made you know, he made these he made his mistakes. For sure. But you know, they don't just fall out of the sky. They get created by something and I think that he was a dude. I, I've always felt that he was a guy that really needed heavy kind of a, structure. Uh, yeah, a discipline, a very disciplined system to to be in. Yep. And uh, you know, when he didn't get it, he leaned into his his worst base instincts, and now we're seeing the result of that. And it's it's really it sucks for everybody. I mean, it sucks for the the wake of destruction that he's left. And it's it sucks that he has self immolated in such a way, a public way, you know, like such a. Uh, it's just bad. It's bad to see a guy self destruct like that. I mean, you don't ever. You never want to see you don't, anything you know, like I, that. For yeah. me, like I don't it, like there are some bad people in the world that I'm like, look, if this happened to. I would have less sympathy for. Sure, but none of, none of those dudes are hockey players. Yeah, and it's just. It's just tough. Like you want, you want to hope that he gets the help that he very, very obviously needs, and that you know, just not even, not even in hockey, but that personally he can turn his, turn his life around, and that he can, he can get help, and that he can figure it out, man. Yeah. Maybe of that's maybe that's too bleeding hard of me and not hardline enough, but. I will also say he's earned every bit of of his suspension, and yeah. he's probably he's probably lucky. Thinking thinking of Vax card is fucking stupid. Yep, and it's it, there's, you could argue for a lot more in twenty one games. Yeah, straight up, like that's a failed IQ test. That's a moronic thing to do. Yep, and I twenty one games almost feels light when you try and like get one over on the league like that. I would say they should throw the book at him, but I mean, twenty-one games in the NHL is a lot, given that they regularly just dismiss. I mean, what he travels to a building that requires vaccinations, or or God forbid, he goes plays in team in Canada. Yeah, and they find out he's not vaxxed. I mean, the repercussions of that could be. Yeah, well, the the domino effect of such a stupid and selfish decision. Yeah, and I think that's. That's where it comes back to with Evander Kane over and over and over. Stupid and selfish decisions. Yep. And genuinely I hope that he I hope that I hope that he gets help and I hope that he sorts himself out emotionally and mentally and you know if if someday he I mean I'm saying I think he'll be back in the league because he can score goals but I hope that I hope that he can do something to someday earn his way back Redeem in himself a and, little bit. Yeah. yeah, I mean you would love you would you would love a redemptive arc here, but he's so far from that right now. It's, uh, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I think he'll play again just because because 
the NHL is what it is, and I have no faith in sports leagues to if you can play mm. at all. Tony D'Angelo plays for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, I think that's all you have to say about yeah. Evander Kane getting back into the well, NHL. Well, and it's 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 funny because it's like I, I guess it's not funny, but it's people people make the argument about Tony D'Angelo. Oh well, doesn't he deserve a second chance? This is his fourth franchise. Yep. Like, and that's why that's why I say you know I have no no faith that the league is going to draw a hard line and say, no, you can't come back until you're good. Especially if this ends up in a situation where San Jose voids his contract because of his violations. on Yeah. Some team will absolutely pick up Evander Kane for a cheap deal. I guarantee it. I think that's a great point, too, uh, when you talk about him coming back to the league because that contract is prohibitive. Yep. I think it's got four or five years left at $7 million per. It's a lot. You can't. Just given given this offseason alone. Right. No no one was was going to touch that thing. He was in the headlines constantly. For a different reason (laughs) every day. It was ridiculous. Yep. So, you know, it's, that's a really big commitment to make financially. You know, that's why I think when he comes back, it'll be with the Sharks. But we'll probably, see. but I don't know. That's a I, I'm hopefully hope just I hope he gets help and it's it's good that the league is coming down on him. Now that I'm thinking about it, 21 games feels light because that's a that's such a stupid thing to do. I such a stupid I thing to do. Let's be real. I think the correct suspension here would have been indefinitely. Edwin is correct. We are not going to solve society on this pod. Very, very true. It's uh. Damn it! There I are... guess we're out for the day. That was it. Good talk, everybody. What's the point of the podcast then if we can't solve what? society? How, how many? I'm how many viewers? Wondering. How many viewers we got? We got here. We got over a hundred of you, so you know we're only two hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred short of the U.S. population, <laughs> let alone the world's problems. Yeah, look, but <laughs> if we can't solve, if we can't, how long have we been live? Nineteen minutes. Yeah. If we can't solve society's problems in nineteen minutes, what Why, have we what's even the spend point? Nineteen minutes doing. Yep. All right. Look. Unbelievable. It might not solve the world's problems, but... Yeah, we couldn't even decide on what the opposite of a plumber was. Yeah, true. True. (laughs) The answer we got was clogger, which missed the point entirely. Clogger and arsonist were the best two answers, I think. (laughs) But, look. Might not solve the world's problems, but it will give you a good time and is delicious. Breckenridge Brewery. The official beer of DNVR. Got myself an avalanche right here. Absolutely delicious. Come get them down at the DNVR bar if you would like. Also, go check them out at your local liquor store. Pretty much everywhere in the the lower 48 has them now. Um, I know AJ might still have to smuggle some up to Canada when he goes back there. But... I don't know. I brought so much up last time. She's got plenty. <laughs> Are you good to go on? Yeah, she's good. <laughs> All right. So hit up uh, hit up AJ's fiance in, in Canada if you're looking for Breck Brew. <laughs> She's got the underground market covered. <laughs> After that, this is the only place in Canada where you can get a Breck seltzer is her kitchen. <laughs> about to open up a market. Yeah, straight up. She's about to black market that thing. Right. She should, too. I just found an Advil in the couch. Girl, get paid. Right. We got somebody with an Advil problem around yeah, here? Yeah, just pulled it out of the couch just mm. like that. You don't hit me with that shit. <laughs> uh, also, Strava Craft Coffee, the CBD infused coffee. Maybe you don't need Advil. Just have your Strava Craft coffee in the morning because it'll take care of your coffee and it'll take care of all your aches and pains, unlike an Advil. Oh, I missed by a lot. Kobe! (laughs) Uh, Check them out. They've been sponsors with us for a very, very long time. If you've never ordered before, (laughs) you can get 25% off with code DNVR25 at StravaCraftCoffee.com. Go get them. Strava is another one of those things like... I'm on the show and I try to explain to you guys the Wagyu burger and it's like, I will tell it to you, but you just have to go and try it there. You can't explain greatness. You just have to experience it. So experience some Strava craft today. Experience it every day. When I look in the mirror, 
<laughs> Greatness? I, I think. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. So great. Very humble for a man with a gavel. <laughs> so, we're moving on. Uh, this one, all right. For the seven of you who watch F1 with us. Yo, let's go. This weekend. Let's go. Let's go. This weekend, they're they're at they're in America. They're they're racing in Austin uh, at the Circuit of the Americas. We're gonna we're gonna sequester at least one TV at the DNVR bar on Sunday. Yep. For the race starts at one p.m. Mountain. Yep. So if you want to come, uh, if you want to come watch some Room Room with AJ and I this weekend, hit us up. Come to the bar on Sunday. We'll have. We're a good gonna time. call it the Zoom Room. The Zoom Room. <laughs> Let's go. We will divide the room in half for Team Max and wrong people. Wow. So I'm going to be by myself? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I'll join you, AJ. I'm clearly in no, the No, no. Then we will cut off one corner for no, Team Checo. I am, yeah, I am anti-Checo. We will not be watching the race together. <laughs> you are anti-me. I will end the show right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's going to get you in more trouble than me. <laughs> probably. We'll probably be worth okay it, with though. That one. No. <laughs> We'll just go back live and be like, okay. Uh, second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. The Broncos play on Thursday. That's why we yeah. have Sunday to do what we want. Yep, exactly. We're free. Um, We're free of those god-awful Broncos. I kind of breezed over this, so I did want to circle back around to it. Malt 7 Cout. They're getting their opportunity here, or at least an opportunity here. With a lot of dudes out of the lineup, it, uh, yep. Set some expectations here, AJ. Is this going to be two guys that drop in on the fourth line and play eight minutes? Yep. That that simple. Yep. All right. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be Maltsev, Megna, and Kaut. Yeah, sounds fine to me. You, Megna in the middle, though, not Maltsev. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Let uh, if we don't have the clip, I wish we did. Uh, I'll. Probably post Caleb, it later, but Caleb, don't you have a Sabers chat to go and hang out? Today? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not the vibe of the chat tonight, for yeah, sure. We we get we get it. Everything about the abs is bad. We understand. Uh, Maltsev scored one of the dopest goals I've seen in a while in the AHL the other night. It was cool, man. Between the legs, up over the goalie's shoulder, pretty dope. It was. It was very cool. Is that? Is that what you think the Avs are looking for here? A little bit more offensive touch with these call-ups? Because let's be honest. No, I think they're looking for better players. Just, just strictly think, better? Well, and I think I think with Mateau, it was obviously purely money. And with Sakura, when they put him on that second line, second line and he played role, like four minutes. And he just but, didn't yeah. do anything with it, man. I just think that it's... Uh, I, I just... It's just a simple upgrade. Yeah, nothing more like, to I, it. I yeah. think they're just looking for. I think they're just looking for answers here. Uh, they're looking for guys that can help them, and you know, Maltz have had an encouraging camp preseason where everything just got better and better and better. And he really should have been the first call up, but then they had to play all these cap games. Yep. And I think I think Maltsev is the is the guy that I'm really keeping a close eye on here. And with Cout, like, we'll, dude, we'll see what happens with Cout. Like, we, we know what the score is with Martin Cout. Yep. All right, you're you're gonna get a you're gonna get a look here. All right, let's see how you do. Like, yeah. Let's see how you do. Uh, let's see if you can earn a second game, and then a third, and then a fourth, and so on, so forth. Like, we'll we'll and, just we'll just see, man. Like, there we like, know the score there, but we also know that with Stefan Mateau and. Jason, even Jason Megna and Dylan Sakura, like we know what that ceiling, we have a sure. pretty good idea what that ceiling looks sure. like. And I just think it's. You got to do more than that. Yeah. Like you, you have to find an answer here. And, and I think you bring up a good point that you're saying they want to see these guys earn a second game because very Thursday, certainly Landy will be back. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. And there's a good chance that McKinnon will be back by then as well. Right. Like their the, the their spots are gonna their spots are gonna run out quickly here. Yep. So it's 
This is very yeah, much a sh- the, small window. The Eagles played a couple games over the weekend, and as multiple comments have noted here, uh, Comfer or Comfer, Count and uh, Count and Maltev were both very good. Yep. In those games, and honestly, outside of the Eagles' goaltenders, the team was pretty good. Yeah, and and then struggled. Well, and uh, Hunter Misko was no great shakes. I mean, we knew that already. But I mean, in the AHL though, like sure. he's been a solid AHL tendy. Well, and well, I mean, let's be real too. The first week of, just of it up. hockey is always nonsense in every league. Like you see goalies get torched on the reg in the first week of seasons. It's yeah, just Darcy what happens. Kemper just did it. I'm I'm saying. So, nothing to hit any panic buttons about yeah, or anything. It's, but. I mean, it's, it's true. No panic buttons here. Like, no panic buttons here at all. Just It's just that, that this is opportunity for these guys. And you want to see it. You want to see it. You want to see how it goes. Yep. Uh, and certainly you want to see one of those guys stick over Jason Magno, who's just not any good. Well, I... He's just not, man. I, I, I agree with you, and... It's an interesting spot because, yes, in the immediate with Nuke out, there is going to be a spot available for one of them to stay. Yeah. But only one of them. And right now. And it should be Malta. <laughs> well, I, I've already decided. I know you've already decided. No, but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm kidding, but I just. You can't. Positional flexibility. You, Malta just It doesn't sense. count unless you bang the gavel. And, you know, I was going to go the entire. You keep bringing it up, man. <laughs> I was going to go the entire show. And I was just going to hold it, and I was never going to acknowledge it, and I was never going to mention it, and I was just going to hold the thing all show, because that's what I was told I had Unacceptable. to do. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. you keep fucking bringing it up. So You're damn to, right. Now I have to do this. Yep. And it's just like, come on. Make you work for it, AJ. All right? Can't just come in here and <laughs> tell you. <laughs> Can't fire off your takes without authority. That's all I'm saying. I always... I, I always fire off takes with authority <laughs> because it's my show. <laughs> um, but uh, an interesting side of this coin, right now, the last spot in the lineup, whatever you want to call it, is Sampo Ranta's to lose. Dude, <laughs> what is what is going on with him? <laughs> Can we see good Sampo, please? <laughs> Waiting for it. But he had one net drive, you know. Yeah, and he fumbled the puck. Yeah, he didn't do anything with it. Shot on goal, but that's okay. Uh, We'll see. The the Avs certainly. Did you watch that segment? No no way. Oh yeah, well, we we knew that was coming. Yeah. (laughs) Which, by the way, keep your eyes out for the watch alongs. Might see might see more Eric and and Scott too. So, looking forward to that stuff. Should be fun. Uh, all right. Should we should we get into the fun section of the show? All of them are the fun section. Yeah, but this is going to be the funner section. Okay. Look, we have a Buffalo guy in the chat. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Avs. Jack Eichel. Rumored to have talked to Buffalo about Jack Eichel. Granted, there are... 30 other teams in the league rumored to have talked with Buffalo about Jack Eichel. This is where Seattle screwed up big time Yep, with the expansion draft and everything is that they didn't get any additional draft assets to throw around. So they could be like, okay, well, we're going to give you Colorado's first, you know, like some random teams first. That's not our own. Which we think could be in the top five, or it could be in twenty-five. We don't sure. really have any idea. So I, you know, this is where this is where Seattle should be the team that was flush with assets, and that right now just dumped them for it's Eichel. Like, yeah, it's like Colorado. Colorado absolutely has the assets to go get Jack Eichel, but that's it. That once they get Jack Eichel, it's over. Like they're you can't make any more big moves. Yeah. You've got one big move left in you. Well, now we can. And that's it. We'll get into this a little bit later, but some uh, LTAIR cap magic could change that a little bit. But it. Bre- Brecton had a stroke halfway through the. Halfway through sending that very capitalized message. <laughs> yeah, that one was rough. 
I realize that AJ loves when anything's in capital letters. Like it just draws his attention Look, and, to it right and, away. And chat to it's your point. Yell that. One of the rumored breaking down points of the conversation with the Abs and Buffalo is that Buffalo wasn't willing to retain on Eichel. Yeah, and so, uh, like that's stupid. <laughs> You don't have to tell me twice. It just is. From Buffalo's perspective, you're not going to compete. If you, that $2 million gets a deal done and gets you an extra first-round pick or something, yep. retaining is smart. Yeah. You know what? Uh, and, like, ah. Uh, <laughs> just your, do it's, it. It's not your fucking money, Kevin Adams. <laughs> <laughs> you think the Pagulas want to sell? Eichel? I, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, they just gave Josh Allen $400 million True. or whatever. True. Uh, but I'm just I'm just saying, like, I think I'd, especially when you look at especially when you look at Jack Eichel, where, OK, so if he's not going to go to Colorado, then who's the team that continues to make the most sense for him and has made the most sense for him from day one? Please don't say New York. It's Vegas, dude. Okay. It's Vegas. I don't think it is. It continues I mean, to be Vegas I, because they can. They can roster offer wise, up, I totally see what you're saying. They but. can offer up the veteran salary that they need to balance the money. They can offer up Peyton Krebs. They can offer up Zach Whitecloud. They can offer up maybe a goaltender because I think Logan Thompson is apparently the shit. <laughs> they can offer up first round picks of Brendan Brisson or whatever, like. They they can they can offer up lots of pieces that should be intriguing to Buffalo, and then they can they can offload some of the they can offload some of the money, like a Riley. I'm just saying that a would, Riley Smith or a William God, Carlson. That would be that would have to be such a monster deal though. There'd be so many pieces in that. So that continues to be that continues to be the thing like. Because look, your Buffalo is not going to get the assets for a healthy in his prime, happy I, Jack Eichel. I think they have to stop the. the we have uh, to stop pretending. Uh, like, look what they got for Sam Reinhart. I, I think everyone in the league knows that they're not going to get that. But Buffalo, Buffalo they're, seems pretty well, dead set on like, getting it or nothing. Most of these offers are like, hey, they're they're going to, they're you know a prospect here and a young player here and a first round pick there and then. Some uh, some veteran, you know, some veteran uh, money to, sure, to, to even out things, sal yeah. some salary here. So, uh, as as Chad is already firing because if off, you're, I mean, if you're if you're Buffalo and you're looking at that offer from Vegas, okay, you get Zach Whitecloud. That's a legit top four defender for you, who is who is young. He's still cheap, although he's about to get more expensive. He can't score. So he's not going to get so expensive. You know, you're looking at the $4 million of an Adam Larson or an Alexiak. You get Peyton Krebs. You get a first-round pick. You get veteran player or players that you can then turn around and flip elsewhere Let for other assets. And then all of us, it's a windfall. Like, that would be a windfall. So what's what's the... Let's dial this back to the Avs. What does an Avs package look like? Yeah, if you're called, if you're Colorado, the only name that you're really saying is absolutely untouchable is Bowen Byram. You're yeah. not giving up Bowen Byram. But if you realistically, if you're Colorado and you offer up Nazem Kadri and JT Comfer, okay, because you have to make some money work. Yep. You have to make some money work. And I mean, Kadri is easy you, for them, right? And you get but. Kadri with the sole express intent. To move him, that dude is elsewhere. on Buffalo for 17 seconds. Yeah, straight up, <laughs> and he gets moved elsewhere for a second round pick. Yeah. Okay. So Kadri and then Comfer comes back home. Sure. Where he got drafted. All right. Great. And then that's all good and well. Uh, so that's so that's where you start. You throw and then, in a first, and then you throw in Alex Newhook, you throw in Justin Barron, and you throw in a first round pick. And is Buffalo really going to say no to Justin Barron? A right shot defenseman, a first round pick, a serviceable and NHLer, look. and JT Comfer, and and then do you have JT Comfer and what is essentially have, a second round pick in that? Yeah, Kadri. and then you have Nazem Kadri, which you flip for whatever. Like, are you really? Is Buffalo really going to be above that? If, because if if they think that they're getting more than that, they're high. I agree with that. I if also, they think that they're going to get 
two recent first round picks in New Hook and Barron, plus more first round picks. Like you've got two guys that could step onto their NHL team today in New Hook and Barron if they wanted. Yep. And Certainly then you have New a, Hook you have a first round you have a first round pick, and then. Yeah, well, you're wrong about everything, so of course you would feel that way. <laughs> because you're not going to get three first-rounders for a, a Jack Eichel with a back problem. This is not point-per-game Jack Eichel in his prime that you feel great about. You just It's just not going to happen. It's not. That's not where it's going to be with him. You're going to have to get... and you, If you wanted three first-rounders and then other players... Then you don't trade Jack Eichel. You're not getting that. I don't. Uh, you can't be high. I don't. I don't know that the Avs would necessarily need roster players back either. Like, yes, the loss at two C while you're waiting for Eichel to recover is something that they'd have oh, to manage. It's his. Oh, it's his neck, not his back. Yes, let's make that better. It. it, it, a, it a guy that's that's what twenty four years old with a neck problem. Not great. Like, the team getting him is getting seriously but, damaged goods. But I do want to talk about this lineup a little bit, because in a world where Eichel is on the Avs and, and the package looks at least similar to what you're talking about, yeah, the Avs' bottom six, sure, they lose JT Comfort, but we have this list of guys. Kalt and Maltz have just got called up today. Yeah, Nachushkin will be back. They still have Shane Bowers down the lineup. It's not like Somewhere the in there. Avs need massive replacements for a lot of these guys. And obviously, once Eichel's healthy, you're running McKinnon, Eichel, 1-2 in whatever order you prefer, and you're happy with it. Um, I think I think part of the question here with Eichel does become how much future are the Avs actually sacrificing here. And and look, yeah. if you're going out and getting Jack Eichel, you're... you're pushing as hard as is humanly possible to win a cup this season and that's the end of that but it certainly shortens the window to give up a first new hook and baron yeah you you're kind of setting up hard date where things are going to get real tough well what you're doing is you're relying on you're you're relying on the the guys being, you know, you're relying on, okay, you've got McKinnon and Ranson and Lenz. You've got that top line. And then you're relying on your ability to find guys to play with Jack Eichel. You know, and then you're yep. and then you're relying on your depth being any good at all. You know, with Tyson Jost and your ability to, to find a Darren Helm every year. You know, guys like that. And then, yeah, like you're going to have a hard time filling out. Like this year, there's Burakovsky, but he's a free agent. Yep. You probably can't afford him. But then you are long term. You're re you're relying on the big four on defense, which is really a big three because you don't expect Devon Taves to be here for the next eight years or whatever. Right. You expect Devon Taves in the next couple of years to be a major contributor. But Gerard Makar and Byram on defense, and then so you've got just your handful of of guys that you're absolutely truly building around. Yeah, at that point would be would be McKinnon, Ranton, and Eichel, Landeskog, Makar, Gerard, and Byram. Like that's your core of your team. Everybody else is interchangeable. So anybody else is allowed to is allowed to to, to move. My my other side of this coin, then yes, you are looking at a significant sacrifice to the future to get Jack Eichel. But if you were to do that, could you go full Tampa Bay? Could you go to Eichel and say, buddy? We're going to get you your surgery. We're going to do what we need to do. And you're going to come back on May 1st. <laughs> yeah. Come back on the first day of the po of the postseason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess you, I guess you could like you could LTIR him or whatever. And, and then, but then I'm saying, and then you go and out then, and get well, another at that, piece. At that point, at that point, like if you go out and you get, we were joking about it before, <laughs> sure. but you go out and you get Phil Kessel. To go along with Jack, like, yeah. then you have, well, what do you give up to Arizona for Phil Kessel that they would want at that point? Because uh, now you've now a you're out twenty twenty three first. Or you've already you gave that to Buffalo because your twenty twenty two first yeah, is already in Arizona. Twenty twenty three second. Uh, <laughs> Drew Hellison. <laughs> I don't Pittsburgh, know. Pittsburgh Pittsburgh got away with being super top heavy. That's the that's the thing that they did. They got away with being super top heavy because it's been it's been Crosby and Malkin, Malkin and Latang. Yeah, 
and then this entire that, time that team won Stanley Cups by literally yeah, putting you're, random you're people lost in the weeds. We're just talking Sydney about Crosby, going them going out and getting a guy. Yeah, it doesn't have we, to be Kessel. We were joking about Phil Kessel before it, the show. It, it can be Tomas Hurdle if you want. Yeah. Like, so like the, this is the problem is that they just don't have the money or they don't have the assets. If you trade for Jack Eichel, you're done, man. You think so? Yeah. You don't have the assets to really... Like, you have the assets to go and do Patrick Nemeth again. Well, uh, that's... They'll do that anyway. You don't have the assets to go and get another big guy after that. But then you have Jack Eichel. And then, which Jack Eichel do you get? Do you get the... Do you get get the the power forward that's going to average a point per game? Power power forward. But, you know, the I should say the big center that averages a point per game. Or what? Or, who knows or, what you get at right, the end or, of that? Yeah. You know, have, we have no, we have no idea what Jack Eichel is going to be like. How his body's going to respond to a pretty serious surgery, and we're talking about a surgery that's got not a hundred percent success well, rate. Well, and here, like, yeah. like, how do hockey players respond to it? Yeah. You know, so it's there are a lot of there's there's a lot of question marks, which once again. Going back to this is why Jack Eichel is not going to fetch a roster player and a top prospect and a bunch of picks. I should say a bunch of firsts. It might they, he might fetch like a thirds, like fourths, a, fifths, yeah, whatever. Like he yeah. might fetch like a first, second, and a third or something. Uh, yeah. But like, it's, yeah, he, yeah. You're not trading Sam Gerard. Sorry, it's not not on that contract. Yeah, um, no, that contract. That contract becomes even more valuable when you trade for a guy like Eichel because it is cost It's how you save money. Yeah. And it's signed forever and ever and ever. Yep. So it's uh, it's an interesting conversation. It, give me a reality scale yeah, here. Again, Kadri, Kadri has a 10-team list that he can, he can veto. And it, Buffalo could and be Buffalo's on it. And Buffalo's probably yeah. on it, but the intent would not be to keep Kadri in Buffalo. He would say yes because they would immediately move him elsewhere. Yep. Not go to Buffalo. Obviously, if the idea was for him to go to Buffalo and stay, you're not why would he have any interest in that? Yep. Um give me a reality check here. Percentage of Kadri or Eichel getting traded to Colorado. 1 0. I would say 0.5%. 0.5. All right. Very very low. Percentage of Eichel getting traded this season. Full stop to anyone. I think it's I, I don't I think it's really difficult to do without the medicals, man. Yeah. I just without without him having surgery and then and a team seeing what's going on. Buffalo Buffalo should probably wait it out. But that's such a toxic environment yeah. to try and like all their guys to try to play through that and like it's uh, hanging over the entire organization and, well and, and this is an organization that's going through essentially their third failed rebuild in a row yeah it's bad <laughs> i don't think he can get traded i i and i think trying to trying to move and fit in a 10 and a half million dollar contract yep i think it's 10 and a half I I is it ten or ten point five? Yeah, I don't it's, remember. It's it's a lot. I, whatever. You're trying to fit. You're trying to fit that deal in there. You mid got, season, you and that's really th- hard. To it do. doesn't just fit. There's a lot of finagling that right. has to be done to to make that work. Yeah. Uh, less finagling is required when you're cutting up a piece of Hassle Cattle Company beef. So head on over to HassleCattleCompany.com, get 10% off your order when you use code DNVR10. You can get the burgers that I've already raved about. <laughs> He's not going to exercise that NMC. Yeah, he, he wants to go The somewhere. first thing he'll do is get rid of that and say, please get me out of here. Yeah, uh, like I'm not in the $7.5 million signing bonus, whatever. Rich people can always just pay each other back. Yeah, that's it. They go, can just do each other a solid. It's fine. Go get the good meats, all right? Don't worry about Jack Eichel and his back meat. Neck and if you're going to get, get the Wagyu, don't be a monster and get it medium, medium well, well out here. Yeah. What was that? That was hard to watch. I know. For for the record, chat, I order the burger at the bar rare. I get it medium rare because I'm a normal human. <laughs> medium well. Don't don't charcoal a, a Wagyu yeah, burger. The whole like. point of the Wagyu is to, to eat the delicious Wagyu. <laughs> uh, not, to, not to eat a 
charcoal a, a brick. biscuit. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, so you can get it down here at the bar, of course. You can also order it at home through HassleCattleCompany.com. If you get a group together, $200 orders get you free shipping. Jump on that. Maybe uh, maybe you need a little help feeling a little hungry for your, your Hassle Cattle Company. You can hit up Solace Meds for all your cannabis needs. They have four locations in Colorado in store with select products ranging 15 to 25% off. And if you order online for pickup, you can get 20% off with code DNVR20 at SolaceMeds.com. S-O-L-A-C-E Meds.com. Check them out. The Wheat Ridge locations also giving you a free king cone with any in-store purchase. So they got you one way or another. Uh, yeah, and then make sure you're taking care of your teeth with Green Mountain Dental Group, the best family dentist in the Denver metro area over in Lakewood. They will give you a free Sonicare toothbrush with a cleaning x-ray and exam. So get on it just for that. Go take care of your teeth. Get yourself a free toothbrush that makes brushing that much easier with its uh, electric brushy brush. I, it's electric brushy brush. I don't know. Well what, what do you well call said. that? I don't, I don't know the word I'm trying to think of. Oh, well. Can't win them all. Uh, Green Mountain Dental Group. Go check them out. They'll take care of you. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Bruto and AJ coming at you. I'd rather have Matthew Kachuk than Jack Eichel, too. Yeah. I, I, all right. So, like. Doesn't have any injury history like that. Yeah. And, well, it's I a guess weird. He's a year younger. It's a weird spot, right? Like. In a universe where Alex Newhook works out and becomes the Avs 2C, <laughs> if you put Matt Kachuk next to him, and all of a sudden your top you six, why not? Because you put Glandis Cog next to him and you put I mean, Matt Kachuk on your top I, line. Either way then, though. <laughs> so you, you, still have, you still have some form of a three-headed monster, <laughs> even if it's Matt Kachuk up there. I'm sorry, but if Newhook works out, if he maxes out to what we think he could be, his absolute top ceiling of like a 70-point guy. Yeah. And that team you were, is dumb. And you got and you got uh, you got back a truck. You have a five headed monster. Yeah, that's basically what it is. You, <laughs> you're a you're a you're that's, a boss level from Resident Evil. They cut off a couple heads of the Hydra, and two heads grew back from yeah, each. Is like, exactly. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of where it would would end up at, and that's with a ridiculous top four on defense still yeah. too. hopefully right. i mean to, i mean to get magic Kachuk, something's gotta go yeah, yeah. You you're not keeping new hook and byram to, to make that one happen but sure. yeah yeah it, it would be ridiculous one way or another uh the yeah uh, way too early for uh no, trade to this trade no deadline means healing. get this it, out of here <laughs> I don't. I, I hope they can't hear that on the show. But I hope not. Uh, I wish I couldn't. What? Uh, way too early trade deadline things. AJ Tomas Hurdle, Phil Kessel. Can just, we see just, the, can just we throw a name out there. Can we see a healthy team first? Nah, fair enough. But just throw a name out there. That would be fun. Um, I mean, Hurdle is like my pipe dream, but. Okay. Hurdle doesn't make any sense with Kadri in tow. Yeah, Kadri not really. would have to be going the other way. Yeah. Although, I mean, come on, for a playoff run. Just stack it up. McKinnon, Kadri, <laughs> Hurdle, Hurdle as your three C. <laughs> as your one through four. That's pretty dirty. Be a good time. Be a good time. All right. So, I mean, what are uh, what is the path back to normalcy for the Avs over the next week? Is it just get through this next game? Yeah. Get Landy back and go from there, yeah, kind of? Get, get, get the guys back. Yeah. I mean, Andrew Mangiapane would be fun, too. <laughs> but you want to talk about a guy that's going to cost pieces. Yep. Nothing's free. In yeah, the well, NHL. Brendan Dillon hasn't been a shark in a couple of years. So he's also like his advanced stats are moving the wrong direction. He's also a jet and was still someone I really like. But yeah, the Jets would have no reason to give him up. Really yeah. signed with Washington in free agency and then got traded to the Jets. Yep. <laughs> Which they're defense has quietly become pretty good it's okay but i mean on paper it got a lot better but in reality <laughs> nothing well, has gone well yeah i mean we're two games into the season Let's slow it down yeah get testing your reflexes there i don't have any man knee is killing me today working on that acl dude it's killing me put you on the ltir dude let's do that <laughs> 
free up some cap space for DNVR real quick. <laughs> it's true. I just signed that fat new contract. So. Oh, making the big bucks, and that's now right. all of a sudden, uh, stuff that's, starts acting up. That's why. That's why all of a sudden I'm 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 gonna be sick on Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, the motivation lost uh, right there. We'll see. We'll see how tomorrow night goes. Yeah. If, they lose, if they lose two in a row, I might just start taking some days off. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, final thoughts here on these call ups, the Av situation. What? Yeah, what, I mean, what do you want to see? Straightforward for us, so we didn't talk too much about them actually. Uh, yeah. Once we got into all this other nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I genuinely like. I'm I'm excited to see what those kids can do. It's always it's always fun when the right guys get called up, or I should say, not the right guys, but the guys that you get excited about, like Dylan Sakura and Stefan Matteo are not going to do guys that have the me. potential to help this franchise in the future. Definitely, and especially because like you invested a first round pick into Martin Cow, you want to get a return, man. Yep. You don't want to you don't want to keep heading towards the same <laughs> deadline flip. Hope for a, you a know, miracle prospect from elsewhere. Like, yeah, like Martin Cowd for Vitaly Kravtsov prospect, film right. prospect swap. You know, yep. like you, that's not what you want to see. You want to see the guy succeed. You want to see him come in and and do a job. You you went and targeted Mikhail Maltsev in that deal. Yep. You want to see you be right about that. You want to get an NHL player here. So it, you know you when these guys get opportunity, you want to see them thrive because these the. The, the the veterans haven't gotten it done. The AHL vet guys have not gotten it done. Yeah. Which they never do. Like we we like Ryan Graves <laughs> screwed everybody up because it gave everybody hope that a guy could actually be pretty good. And then Jacob McDonald had an insane twenty games. You know, like it, these guys, like what we're seeing with these four, these these the magnas of the world is a lot more the, normal. There's not a whole lot there at the NHL level. Yeah, it's just for for all of them, and and it's not to take away. You know, all of these guys are quadruple A players, right? Right. Like Dylan Sakura is a really good AHL player. Yeah. TJ Tynan was really good. Jason Magna is very clearly a good quality veteran guy for your AHL club. But that should be it. Yep. I'm. I don't have to speak dude, into existence. Dude, the, uh, the Kravitzov didn't report to the New York Rangers, and I had multiple DMs within minutes of like, flip count for Kravitzov right, right now. Right. <laughs> like that's anytime a guy comes comes uh, available, that's that's the DM. Uh, that's, yeah. the, that's immediately the reaction. <laughs> yep. Should the Avs do this? <laughs> I don't know, man. With Kravtsov, I would say no. I uh, I would agree. I'd never, that dude got I never drafted. Kravtsov. That dude got drafted because of an insane month that he had in the KHL. Yep. And that was about it. And now he's putting up the same production as Nikolai Kovalenko is. So. Yeah. Who was drafted in the sixth round? Who by needs? The way. Who needs? Uh, who needs Kravtsov? We just signed Kovalenko. Exactly. That's just, what I'm saying. <laughs> Which they should probably do. Get on that, yeah. <laughs> but you know, he also has a say in things, and he, uh, of he's course, if he doesn't want to come over, he doesn't want to come shows. over. And there are other factors there, naturally. Uh, I did not get any Dylan Strom DMs, but I would assume that that's because the sexiness of Dylan Strom has worn off in people's minds. Yeah, well, I think when you get when you get moved once or maybe twice. That is a shine people, comes real yeah, quick. People yeah, people will give up on you at that point. It's. Not only that, but Chicago's in division, right? I mean, so. You say that, but, and yet teams continue to find ways to not trade in division. Yeah, but not the Avs. They keep trading in division. The Avs do, but I'm I'm wondering if Chicago is willing to. That's what I'm saying here. Chicago, Chicago and the Avs have traded twice in the last two years. That's true, but Chicago had to trade Saad. Uh, they didn't have, I don't know they had to, uh, but yeah, the the other one was pretty <laughs> pretty forgettable. Yeah, I mean both are pretty forgettable for Chicago. Oh, totally, uh, but totally. <laughs> didn't work out great for them. Anton, Anton, baby. <laughs> Z's up in Calgary now. 
Yeah. It's a Dorov. Sorry. Yeah. Nikita's a Dorov. It took there. me a second. I know. I know. I, I was know. like, why? <laughs> what don't I know? <laughs> uh, but look, this is... It's the fun part of hockey to speculate about some of these things sometimes. and Yeah, and I mean, trading myself, dude, don't encourage it. Why not? It's, I like it. I think it's fun. No, don't encourage people to get us thinking about trade deadline as long stuff. As, as long as no. Chad understands that it's complete nonsense, it's fun. We should do we should do rumor roundup every week. Oh, every week. my God. <laughs> I don't know if I had and that in me. I can just make up rumors. Nobody will ever know. I'll just make them up, guys. That would be, be amazing. I would actually. <laughs> Isn't love that what that. rumors are anyway? People just making stuff up. Little known fact: AJ actually stands for actual judge. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I try not to. I try not to expose my government name like that. So. <laughs> Y'all forget you heard that. Yeah, maybe put it under wraps there, <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> I don't care if people call me Nathan. Nathaniel. It's fine. And my name isn't Nathaniel, though. That's actually wrong. It's Nathan. Uh, anyway, we're going to get out of here for the day. Thank you, everyone, for watching, listening. However you consume the pod, we appreciate all of you. I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> yes, Judge Florbel. Uh, Judge Florbel. <laughs> I Hope. like I like that these fake characters that we make are just, up just evolve. <laughs> Judge Flurble will now hear the opening arguments from Lawyer Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyers for Sergio Mario. <laughs> the Mario Bros. Damn, law firm. <laughs> damn Dambologist hurt on the job. <laughs> uh. Oh god. The plaintiff, Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're out of here. We appreciate y'all. We will be back post game show live tomorrow after the game no. from the bar. No, no, I don't agree on McDermott. He's not going to be fine. Oh, I see. He's I see. too terrible at hockey. I mean, based on his TOI after that goal he gave up last night, I think Bednar probably going to have a hard time putting him on the ice again. But. Uh, watch. I bet he plays. Yeah, what six minutes? He's gonna play. Oh man, we should have a. That should be on the wheel of destiny. <laughs> McDermott plays over six yeah, minutes. McDermott <laughs> at eight minutes. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Anyway, we love y'all. We'll talk to y'all tomorrow.